too easy for you. Shit! Ah. The ghost did not move at all. Damn it. Screw it. Let's get some points. This is the game for the people who are hungry for points. Not so much about accomplishment, more about points. I don't know. I, mean, I think, honestly, depending on how you pull things off, there is a good sense of accomplishment in this setup here. Well, I mean, like, collecting jiggies in Banjo-Kazooie. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You or know, actually... Oh, go ahead, Skip. Uh, or paying an extra $50 to get to the next stage in Candy Crush Saga. That's <laughs> a different type of accomplishment. Oh, God. Never talk about that game. Yeah, let's not talk about Candy Crush. You, you know, it's actually interesting. Um, a while right. ago, I actually bought the Banjo-Kazooie Banjo-Tooie um, HD remakes for Xbox Live because I, in all fair honesty, I never heard about those games until I found out, I think, was it like two years ago, that they were developed by the same... Uh, by Rare, who did Donkey Kong 64, I was like, hmm, I wonder what this game's like. And I was like, oh my god, how did I miss you? Yeah, I, I know, it's really good. I didn't I, hear about it until last year either. I, I, for some reason, I can't bring myself to play them. I mean, What's wrong with you? I need to I, play them I, too. I, I honest, honestly, it was like, for me, Guys, I was you're, all, you're all like, heard me right now. Seriously? None of you? I mean, I, 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 for me, I was kind of satisfied with the genre with Conker's Bad Fur Day. John, you have to remember, I only had three games growing up. I, that's I, true. I keep forgetting that aspect. I, I play them all now through, through Let's Plays and streams, so I, I get I get them. It's just like 15 years old. It's later. an N64 uh, title, isn't it? Well, it is, but yeah. it's been sort of re-released. I mean, that's might, why I haven't played it. I mean, I mean, for me, like you said, Conker's Bad Fur Day for me was like kind of that game that kind of made me satisfied with the genre, and I just wasn't that interested in other games. I wouldn't call Conker's the same genre as Banjo-Kazooie. I'd call that a platform every, or not platform, a adventure game. Well, I, so there's just a little bit of everything in it. Whereas Banjo-Kazooie is clearly a platform to collect a phone. Right. Well, and, well, also, You're not collecting to, much in Conker's. Well, and also, to be fair, I the most of the time, most of the rare game I really played on the N64 was pretty much Donkey Kong 64, so... But if you liked Donkey Kong 64, you would have loved Banjo-Kazooie. I don't know how I missed that in my childhood. I really, and honest to God, don't know how. But... Luca, blind Banjo-Kazooie. Make it happen. If you guys really want. It's an I idea. Could, I could do it. It's very fun, and you will have zero problems with it. I didn't. That said, I, I don't know. I can make it through Ocarina of Time, so... I mean, I, I could finish Ocarina of Time when I was a kid. What? Really? I just couldn't deal with it. I just didn't. In, I just couldn't enjoy the later game of it. I mean, for me, oh, it's... Calm down, Liam. Calm down. For, for me, it's hard for it to top Link to the Past. That's like Liam's baby. <laughs> what? what? Wait, I'm Li sorry. Li Li Liam, okay. I was moderating a game spot for years around people who were arduous fanboys of Ocarina, uh, to the Ocarina of Time. I've dealt with worst, and all you say is that I'm not discrediting your preference. I'm just saying that I couldn't bring myself to finish that game when I was playing as young, when I was younger. Here's the only th here's the thing. I get the only game I can give a ten out of ten to is a Link to the Past. I can't even give a talk of time. Yeah. So Link to the Past is better. I just like Ocarina of Time more. Sure, sure, and that's, that's the thing. I mean, there's certain things about that game that really connects with some people. It just didn't make that connection to me. Like, did you find it difficult, or did you find it just boring? I, I, it, it's so it's about? more about the boring part. I mean, honestly, that's the problem with Banjo Kazooie. I just sort of like lose interest because I'm just not on board with the premise. Let me, let me, okay, slow this brain train down. You don't like Banjo Kazooie or Ocarina of Time. I, I, now see, that's kind of mischaracterizing what it is. It's not that I don't like it, it's just that. I've never been in the mood where I'm on board with the mindset that is necessary to enjoy the game. You don't enjoy Ocarina of Time or Banjo-Kazooie. What do you enjoy? Um, depends on what mood I'm in. I mean, for I, the, the, the way I play games is ways that will confuse people. Like, I hate Demon Souls and Dark Souls, but I spent over a hundred hours playing Dark Souls because I was fascinated by Dark Souls. 
because I, I end up playing games more out of fascination about understanding how the game behaves and how I react to it than for playing games for completion. There are exceptions to this rule, but... Well, I don't play I don't play games for completion either. Yeah, and that's part of the whole thing. It's like, I... It's... Those are games, and that's the problem, problem with the Ocarina of Time and such. Like, I never could play that game to completion, and I couldn't do the same thing with Banjo-Kazooie. Um, but I did Conker's Bad Fur Day, partially because I just found the humor in it just something that made me really dig into it. John, I have a question. Do different fruits give you different point values? Uh, the more you collect, the more points you get, basically. Way to mm. be, John. The majority, were, the really majority of the ass. score, though, always comes from killing the ghosts, which is why you need to get as big of a train as possible and just kill them all at once. And that is a very high score. Yeah. Uh, that no, was, yeah actually, that was a... no. I don't like if I was connected online right now, I could probably show you what the high scores are because I'm pretty sure they break the 10 million mark. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I can't do that at the moment because there's an Xbox Live update, and I don't want to just bog down the stream with update. So that is more or less the game, though. There's different maps you can go on, like Highway, Junction, Spiral, Manhattan. I haven't unlocked the other four. Dungeon, Championship 1, which is from the original Pac-Man Championship game. And Half, which is, I believe both sides are just keep changing differently. And Darkness, where you can't see really anywhere else but where you are. And then there's just Free Mode, which is kind of like a practice type mode. So um, that's more or less the game. So do you think we should jump to the cookie or just do another random round of one of these? That's tough because I think the I think it's really entrancing to watch. That dungeon uh, stage looks really interesting. It seems really small, but it seems interesting. Yeah, sadly, dungeon's locked. I had, I had to do a bunch of things in Manhattan, I think, to... Or maybe I just need to do one thing in Manhattan, but it's I need to do the short, the, the five-minute score attack. What is the free mode then like? Seems like a gratuitous amount of cookie. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> People are just like, I'm still recovering from that experience. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a lot of cookies flying there right now. Mm -hmm. So like I said, that's pretty much the game. It's an amazing game. I highly recommend you get it. I think it's like five bucks. But at the same time, you kind of know what you're get, what you're going to get by just that clip you just watched of me. But it's super fun. I highly recommend mm -hmm. people pick it up. All right, and oh, yeah, based on the majority of the cookies, let's jump back to the cookie. Man, I'm trying to think of <coughs> ways of listening to games that I, I really do like. Um, I enjoyed, well, Rez and Killer7 are high up on the list for me. Um, I'm going to have to cut you off in a second here, Skitch. No problem. Okay, our four games for this round of the cookie are as follows. Ninja Gaiden Black for the original Xbox, followed by... Ghost Squad for the Wii. No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle for the Wii. I have a feeling I'm going to be grabbing my Wii at this rate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Firefighter FD18 for the PS2. <laughs> I know mm -hmm. nothing about that game. I just know you play as a firefighter. That's all I know. <laughs> all right, let's see what wins it this time. I have... I have my guess what I'm going to be playing, but I'm going to see what the what it says first. Click on Ten Mars link once it appears in the chat, and let's figure out what game we're playing next. There's the link. I love how all of Ten Mars' comments always start with "Dear Chat." It's always so polite. <laughs> so polite. All right, current results are as follows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Firefighter FD18 with 45% of the vote. No More Thank Heroes 2 at 32. Ninja Gaiden Black at 13. Ghost Squad at 11. Oh yeah. my goodness. I had a feeling the generic sound of the name would have been it. I thought it was going to go to No More Heroes 2. I'm not going to lie. Especially considering we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, it's hard. I don't. I, which which do you prefer overall? No More Heroes 2 or No More Heroes? Two. I haven't played. Oh, that's a tough one, Liam. What are you gonna say? I haven't played either, but they look really cool. They're they're very they're very stylish. They're very simple as far as like beat 'em ups that's, go. Well, I mean, it's it's a, it's a Suda Fifty One game. They all play the same, but no, 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 no. That's that's not actually that accurate to say. Um, Is it a beat 'em up? Yes, but they're all beat 'em ups. No, they're not. Killer Seven isn't a beat 'em up. Flower Sun and Rain isn't a beat 'em up. Uh, Shadows of the da Damned is not a beat-em-up. 
Um, oh, June saw is a beat em up. Yeah, but that's that's the that's the only third case of that. And then Killer is Dead is kind of in the same line, but the vast majority of <coughs> Studio Fifty One's games are actually adventure games. I don't know, three and a half out of five. Uh, there's more than five games in this repertoire. <laughs> You're talking with Suda Fifty One fanboys here. I'm just, I'm just saying, no, no more heroes. It's a hack and slash. It's a lot like Suda Fifty One. They all, I find that all the ones that I've seen play generally the same. That's, the, the more yeah. popular ones of his are usually the hack and slash, but yeah, that's that's a that's actually still a minority of his library. What if his, <coughs> no, his second game oh, was a Super Famicom wrestling it. game? Do it. Tell well, the whole story about this game. I love this story. This is it's a wrestling game where it basically seems like I have a standard sort of like wrestling Japanese game plot line up until you get towards the end. And towards the end, the plot gets really, really dark. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I get an accurate reading of how this ends off because it's amazing in how this goes as a Famic Super Famicom game. Um, this would be Super Fire Pro Wrestling Special. The way that the game finishes out is, I believe... Shoot, I I think I remember the majority of this. It, it's it's you basically your girlfriend dies, I believe, and your manager gets killed in front of you, and something like that. You were able to win the final match, but in doing so, you feel that your em victory is an empty one, and your character goes home and commits suicide, and that's the end of the game. Yeah, and they actually show like a camera outside the, the character's house, and then you hear a gunshot. Yes, and then it fades to black, and the credits roll. Right, that's basically that's 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 the introduction to Suda Fifty One, wrestling, dark storyline, suicide. Uh, I think I there's what, also I think the girlfriend actually doesn't die; she leaves you for your your old yes. friend who becomes like your rival, and that's then right. your rival kills your manager. Yes. And it's and like then, it's fucked up. Uh, it gets it gets like, but again, it's it, it gives you an insight into Suda Fifty One as a person. Um, and kind of things that are interesting. Also, you forget um, Contact is a great, another really interesting Suda 51 title. All right. Um, before we get into more discussion about Suda 51, Firefighter FD18 is the winner at 44%. <laughs> so when we come back from break, uh, we're going to be playing that game, which should be fun because I have no idea about it. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I mean, it's, it's like, uh, but, um, uh, but yeah, the thing about the No More Heroes games, I would say No More Heroes 2 is better designed than No More Heroes 1. But No More Heroes 1 overall is a more memorable experience, and the way that it's memorable is more fun for me. They both just look fun. Yeah, in my opinion, I like No More Heroes 1 better, but 2 plays better, except for certain fights. Sure, I, I can agree with that too. I mean, 2 cut out a lot of the filler, but in a sense, there's a little bit of charm in the filler that was um, uh, in its nature because I actually kind of liked some of the side jobs and the tedium of going around the town but that was just sort of I, me I like the bike theme that was why I liked it yeah and um, I definitely appreciated the faster pace in No More Heroes 2 sure absolutely yeah I apologize for messing up the plot description of Super Fire Pro Wrestling Special, but for me, that was just a fascinating sort of insight because it it's very consistent with what his uh, overall uh, approach to things is. So, Yeah, he kind of got known for doing really fucked up storylines after that, understandably. I mean, Flower, Sun, and Rain is a great example of that. If you played the DS re-release of that. Have you played that, John? I think I picked it up. Okay, I have it. I played through it. It's another kind of bit of insight in terms of his design style. I, I've heard um, a bunch of people say it just did not age well. Oh no, it doesn't age well. But that's. But I was gonna play it regardless. Oh yeah, no. I just. I'm just warning you. Um, let me see if I, I. I think I can almost see it here. Uh, front mission flat flower sun rain. There you go. No shark food tonight. Uh, it hasn't come up in the cookie. If it comes up in the cookie, it'll probably win because I don't think it's ever lost a vote. Really? Actually, How I many think... times have you ended up playing? 
Uh, since I've been in this apartment, once. Over Since I've been streaming at least two times, maybe three. Yeah. I was in a new apartment. It's really <laughs> good, actually. I really like it. Uh, the, the people I've met are nice. The only problem I had so far was that someone set off the fire alarm in the entire building because they burnt their roast. But apparently that same family also had kids who were just smoking pot inside their apartment. Mm. That's why now... Convenient. Yeah, that's why every hallway in our apartment building now has drilled into the wall a giant-ass sign that says, Don't smoke here! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I just... I, I also realized that's... I wonder how good Fatal Frame 4 is, because that was the one that Suda51 was the one of the directors of. Really? I didn't See, I realize think I know. that. Yeah. I also figure that the music is good because it's Masafumi Takata, who was the guy who did the music for Killer7 and No More Heroes. Oh, really? Oh, no. Oh, no, that's, that's the Umbrella Chronicles. Man. Uh, Masafumi Takata also did music for... The Umbrella Chronicles, I believe that was the what the light gun game for the Wii, mm -hmm. which I actually liked a lot. It was actually I, I thought it was like a it was like a light gun game that took you twenty hours to get to the end of the game, and I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, and Wesker does the narration for the entire game. It's yes. it's pretty good. It, it was one of those things that kind of made me think, yeah, like good games are fun on the Wii. John, did you like Resident Evil 1? Uh, truth be told, I have not finished it. I'll take that as a solid maybe. <laughs> uh, the Resident Evils I've finished are 2, 4, 5, and I've played 1 and 3. But I've I haven't, I haven't finished six. 1 and 3. I've finished 1. Six. I haven't finished... I haven't played 6, actually. I watched my ex... Or play through it. I've, Sucks. I, I've played one. I finished one, two, remake at least once, four, and five. Oh my god, this egg gift is amazing. It is. Who made this? Puppet Master. You're amazing. Oh geez, someone's talking about Dust, a Legion story. That's that uh, Dust. Um, I, I know that. I know the composers behind. It. I think one of the composers behind it is Alexander Brandon. Um, I need to double check because I think that's the case. Yes, Alexander Brandon. And and does anyone even want to give a reaction for Alexander Brandon at all? No, that's unfortunate. A bit of a delay, don't worry, dude. There might be someone uh, to make a comment. I've heard very good things about Dust. I bought it and I haven't played it yet. I'm still working through Darksiders, which is amazing, by the way. Certain Darksiders 2 or Dustsiders 1? 1. Okay. Burned into your memory. They haunt you endlessly. Man. Oh, the problem is oh man, there, there's plot. Game. There is plot happening right now. That is why really? I do the firefighting do. plot? Is a building on fire? Tell me a building's on fire. Go to Familiar sound of the alarm. There's someone talking like Snake. It's pretty amazing. Well, if there's no fire to fight, what's the matter? What I'm trying to do is extinguish the memory. Oh, please tell me this is just Metal Gear Solid meets firefighting. That'd be amazing. I keep saying to myself, she is alive somewhere. Is this a firefighter who has memories about his sister or girlfriend dying? Oh my god, how Metal Gear is this? Holy shit! So what is the name of this game again? Firefighter FD-18. This is pretty grim for firefighting. Control I mean, I just... I just want him to save the building. I don't really care too much about his girlfriend or whatever. If that's going to distract him from the job, fire him. Let's see here. I'm I've got a dodge button. Oh my god. This is this is a very well, I guess you'll need to be able to dodge when you're fighting fires. They might throw they might fight back. Wow. See this game looks kind of fascinating just on its premise. It is a Konami game. Alright, let's see what this is. Let's see what this game is. I know nothing just watch, about this. Just watch it be made by Kojima Studios. 
I love that loading bar of fire. All right, here we go. Opening cutscene. Oh, man. I was thinking this was reminding me of Cursed Mountain. It seems this seems better than Cursed Mountain. Oh, I mean, it, it, it probably is better. I actually finished Cursed Mountain because it just fascinated me how many missed opportunities that game had. In its in its run. Um, there has been yet another explosion. Still don't know how many vehicles were involved, but from here, the flames are absolutely enormous. The rescue workers are ready to go in. They will start battling the blades from inside the tunnel shortly. Wow, the subtitles are not even remotely close to what she's saying. How many vehicles were involved in the accident? That's how you know it's accurate reporting, you know? I, yeah. I genuinely think this is the same engine as Metal Gear Solid. Twilight 18 News, we report, you decide. Watch the K&M News. I'm here to rescue every single person who needs help. We report with a severe political stint, you decide, after Never, we tell you what ever. to think. She has Maybe the, the red shoes! She's Maybe the girlfriend! The Maybe this reporter will start use, uh, using sign language and be horribly, horribly. Oh off. my God! Look at the fucking broad shoulders. John, just John, look, John. Just look at when she puts her arms on her hips. Look how unnatural that looks. John, you're, you're spoiling the plot. I mean, basically, well, are you saying? Okay, so here's the thing. The, the, the plot is clearly that the fireman is actually her. Okay, they're both the same person. This is like Jacob's ladder, only with firefighters. Whoa! Those shoulders. I'm telling you, dude. She. Yeah, that's kind of odd foreshadowing that she has red shoes. Apparently, mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a teen rated game for blood, mild language, and violence, says Luigi's Man. And, and red shoes. Don't forget the red shoes. Warranty T rating. Your mission is to rescue all survivors. They will have the flashing word survivor over their head, just like you do right now. So, you, so you, the, it's, the game is saying that you're a survivor, but you have to save survivors. So you need to save yourself. Exactly. It's, ve it's very meta. Locations of survivors are displayed on the map. Find a route to get there and rescue them. Sprinkle them with water. I have a water gun! Holy shit! This literally is Metal Gear Solid firefighting. I will save you! I'm doing it. I'm fighting water. Fighting fire. I will spray you with the water. You will be fine. Wow, you actually are perfectly fine. Help her. How do I first person aim? I must make sure she's soaking wet so she does not catch on fire. She is fine. <gasps> wow, this is crazy. Good! Find more survivors! Oh, it's not really a dodge roll, more of like a little a sidestep. Okay, I think this is the I think this is PlayStation's answer to Mario Sunshine. <laughs> but it's Konami made, so. Right. Press the R1 button to discharge water! Use the right. Oh, to change his direction. Press this triangle button to change the hose nozzle. That's pretty dodgy. Oh man, first person or third person firefighting. That over the shoulder view. Made in Resident Evil 4. Oh god, there's so much fire. Also, fire control. Good thing this hose never seems to run out of water. Well, I would hope not. And or catch on fire because the fire keeps lighting up behind me. That one's a little more practical. Well, can the rubber doesn't burn well anyway. I just noticed my hood, my hose is actually not connected to anything. I can see the end of it. <laughs> Where's the water come from? It's coming out of the ground. Of course, groundwater. I should have known. John, Where's why? Where's the fire? <laughs> People are asking me why I own this game. 
Uh, apparently, this was one of the rarest games on a site called Guzex for the PS2. So I saw it for like 20 bucks and I picked it up. I originally meant to trade this off for something else that I wanted, but I didn't do it. And I just decided, eh, maybe someday I'll find some fun out of this. So here you go. That's that plant's a pretty short. That's a pretty short hose too. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted just to take this whole, um, kind of like this whole game scenario and just put Mario music to it. Mario Sunshine music. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh no, I'm on fire! That's Stop, okay. drop, and roll, hopefully, or spray yourself, whichever happens first. My bad, so stop, drop, and roll. This game taught me an important lesson. Don't run into fire. Because you never know when it'll happen. Everyone, Proton John is learning. I like how the school bus... Whoa! I like how the school bus has to tell you it's a school bus. Yeah. Oh, you're all right. You've got to watch out. I don't, I don't know what I'm watching out for. <laughs> hey, get me the hell out of here. Give me the hell out of here. Da -da -da -da. Maybe it's Chris Redfield before he actually became a zombie person. Fire Gear Sunshine. <laughs> Fire Gear Sunshine. There we go. Mm -hmm. We've done it. We've solved the mystery. Fire Gear Evil Sunshine. Chris, Mario Redfield, heads off into Raccoon City to take care of some fire while his girlfriend, who has already died in the future, comes in the past. Am I spraying blood? What the fuck? Wait, it, what? It's a hallucination. Did you hook up the hose to a person? I, I'm, no, I'm spraying the car and it's spraying red. Yeah, that's, it's, it's one of the hallucinations. I mean, remember, this is uh, Eternal Darkness, right? Oh yeah, totally. If you're on the fire, quickly move the left analog stick back and forth to shake it off. SHAKE what OFF THAT FIRE! Fuck? SHAKE OFF THAT FIRE! What is up with that? Why is it burning red? I found a medkit. I'm good. Hurry up! What's the worst game you have ever played, John? Uh, Aiden Chronicles, the second mage, or first mage. I keep forgetting getting the name confused in my head. I'm surprised you answered as quickly as you did. Oh, because I've had that question asked me numerous times. Yeah. What's it about? It's an it's a generic RPG that's just not all that good. Huh. Um, for you, what um, for you, I mean, what what game made you the most viscerally upset while playing it? Viscerally, uh, define viscerally. Um, as in like, I was playing um, Oblivion, and there was a point when I realized how leveling mechanic in the game worked, and it offended me so much that I completely stopped playing it. Well, I stopped playing games a lot, even good games, so that's not a very good indicator. No, well, no, no, well, that's, it, it, I, I was offended at the design of the game. I, I just have to say the most offended I've ever been at a game is with Final Fantasy X-2. I would like to point out the game just told me to run through fire. You're a firefighter, you can do that. Yeah, because you're a survivor. Ah, good point. And it's all in the eye of the tiger. You know, Final Fantasy X-2 is the most offensive I've ever been at a game. I can sum it up in one... No, two words. Character assassination. <laughs> that, that, that specific the fuck? game did not need a sequel. Where? It, 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 it's, it, see, my problem, see, my whole thing is that X-2, unfortunately, had, if I'm not mistaken, two things that were generally positive about it from a design standpoint. One was just the general combat system itself was generally well handled as one of the better examples of active time battle system. Yeah, if only it wasn't about changing your clothes. Well, I mean, if only the class system wasn't as ridiculously assigned as changing your clothes, yes. Um, and also, um, I believe the story, that the main plot actually had like a branch in it actually, but. Well, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't call that a good thing, or a, a particularly inventive thing. Right. Lots of games have branching paths. Sure. But so I wouldn't. I wouldn't call that a selling. Normally, Final Fantasy as a franchise doesn't. 
I... I don't know. No, maybe not. Sure. I don't know if went through special emotions there. But what I hated most about that game was it's like... Final Fantasy...